Rather Be the Devil uh, opens with Rebus out for a meal with his girlfriend and as he's wont to do he mentions a murder that happened in the restaurant where they're dining and it's a restaurant in a posh hotel uh, in Edinburgh um, and the murder happened nearly 40 years ago in 1978. He was involved in it as a young detective that never got anywhere and it starts to niggle him because he's still got the case notes back at home. And then there start to be resonances, which mean that this case may be solvable in the present and may have some connection to stuff that's happening in the present. In the present, uh, Rebus's ex-colleague, um, Siobhan Clark, um, is looking into the, an attack on a young gangster, um, Daryl um, Christie, who runs Edinburgh. And he's taken over the city from an older gangster called Big Jer Cafferty, who has been Rebus's nemesis. And Cafferty is in the frame for this attack on the younger gangster. And at the same time, a financier has gone missing. So there's quite a lot going on. And it all starts to seem to connect. Morris Gerald Cafferty began life as a homage to a gangster in Lawrence Block's um, novels featuring the private eye, Matt Scudder. I was a big fan of those books and I liked his gangster figure. Um, but also, Cafferty, I began to see, was an interesting way of, was an interesting character to play off Rebus. It's like the two of them are like Cain and Abel. They're like Holmes and Moriarty. They're, you never know if they're going to become friends or destroy each other. Both are possible. Um, and in fact, everything in between that is possible as well. So they're very wary. Not a friendship, but there's an empathy between the two of them. And of course, as the series progresses, they each save the other's life at various times. It's as though they can't live. The one can't live without the other. So they really are like uh, kind of, you know, um, Siamese twins in a way, or two sides of the same coin. Um, but they're both ageing, and so as Rebus retires and sees police work taken away from him and begins to wonder if he has any role left in the world, any useful role to play, so Cafferty's empire is wrested away from him by younger, more venal gangsters. Uh, and at the end of the previous book, uh, Even Dogs in the Wild, there's a scene with Rebus and Cafferty where Cafferty walks away holding up one finger to say to Rebus he thinks he's got one good fight left in him. And this new novel uh, is the story of that one good fight for both men. Uh, next year, 2017, is the 30th anniversary of the first Rebus book coming out. And so we're going to celebrate that, we're going to have festivals, going to um, do lots of public appearances, maybe do a little music festival around Rebus's taste in music, I don't know. All kinds of thoughts and uh, ideas bounced around at the moment, but as part of that process, I'm not going to write a book next year. That's the plan, is that I'm not going to write a book next year, so I'm not really thinking about that too much. And there's never been a plan for Rebus, never been a long-term plan. I never know between books if there's a new book about to arrive and what that story might be of that book. Um, but at the back of my mind, in a tiny, tiny, tiny compartment, there is the vague beginning of a story that may be the next Rebus, but it probably won't be next year or probably be for the year after if the good Lord spares me. I know the good Lord will spare him, but will the good Lord spare me?